Well, we've had Patreon poll episodes, but now we have our very first Patreon contributor episode. If you're a top contributor at www.patreon.com slash thecinemasnob, you get to suggest a movie for me to review on the show. So a big special thanks to contributor Jeffrey for not only his contribution, but for also suggesting to me what is sure to be Top-tier quality cinematic entertainment. Fuck! Cops are all over the place! You tell everyone to stop them no matter what it takes! Just get out of here and leave us alone! Dangerous Men. Guaranteed it's like nothing you've seen before. Oh, Jeffrey. I am very disappointed. So Dangerous Men is a rape revenge film from Iranian director John Rad. Because Tommy Tubular was fucking busy that day. Actually, John Rad's real name is J uh, uh, John Rad. After fleeing Iran in 1979 as an architect and filmmaker, Dangerous Men was set to be his first American action film, with production starting in 1984, although work on the film would continue over the next two decades before ultimately getting an official release in 2005. But why say more about the film when the box cover already tells you everything you need to know about the film? The holy grail of holy fucking shit. Why the fuck would you shit in a grail? Well, it's a good thing I already own a copy of this. Apparently, I have everything in my jacket. It's this. Action Max Hydro Sub 2021. What the fuck is that? So let's find out what constitutes a holy grail of holy fucking shit. I can tell you that does not look like a trustworthy camera to shoot your movie on, even if it clearly shoots on film. Best be careful, these titles cause explosions. Good thing there's water there to put it out. It may say John S. Rad here, but for everything else, it's just John Rad, and I do mean everything else. Writer, director, music, executive producer, hell, I think he may even be playing The Waves. I don't know who this guy is, but if he gets ten more people, he can reenact an Ocean's Eleven poster. Whoever this is, he likes to walk. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, but I think you're being followed by a Sega Genesis soundtrack. Say, things are picking up for this random guy. Thank you, baby. It's beautiful. Well, if you really want to thank her, stop kissing her with sandpaper. What the hell was that sound effect? David with his girlfriend. Not that that matters, because now we're with two completely different people. And it's, uh, distracting. I love you so much, Mina, that sometimes it scares me. So many things that I want to say, but I can't. I can't say it because the minute I start to open my mouth, I you know, sound stupid. Or... Actually, every time you open your mouth, suddenly we can hear the difference between your audio being muted and the background noise coming in. Who made that brilliant editing decision? Was it the guy who's credited for everything else? I forget, is it the gold or silver anniversary where you're supposed to make out in the eye of a tornado? So the editing is weird, but maybe the story is paced well? What the fuck? Meanwhile, in the ending of Fast Times at Ridgemont High... Quick, someone put a stop to this. Son of a bitch rubbing my shot! Shut the fuck up! Oh, fuck you up! Oh. Fuck. Oh. Wow, those years of playing tag on the playground really paid off. Okay, bitch, you're asking for it. 
<laughs> or not, turns out you can't catch bullets. By the way, yes, squirt guns were this dangerous in the 80s, especially when you filled them with delicious ketchup. I'm starting to think this movie is very random. Bring your hands down. Daniel, Daniel, come in, please. Hi, Mina. These are for you. Oh, thank you. They're beautiful. What the fuck is going on here? Ah, uh, an establishing shot of the city during the magic hour. The best way to distract audiences in the 80s. And we're back to the tornado again. Now he's busy filming his half of the Godfrey Ho cut and paste footage, if need be. This is Mina and a guy who's about to be dead. Wait, what do they have to do with anything? Be careful on the way home, okay? And I'll see you soon. Okay. See you then, my favorite brother. Yes, thanks for that. Now, not only do I know that he has a brother, but he has a favorite one, too. How is this guy his favorite anything? Look at that ocean over there. Isn't it absolutely beautiful? Yeah, it is. I bet you can't guess what's even more beautiful. <laughs> Since you are so sure I can't, you just better tell me. You are! <laughs> I now don't feel bad that that guy's about to be killed. Looky here, honey. This is where they film the opening credits to the hit movie Dangerous Men. So are these our main characters now? Why did we start out following this couple? And why are they being given an invite to a new Leather Daddy Bear Club? Listen, you assholes, just get out of here. I'm gonna break both your neck. <laughs> Come on, man, let's go. Great, he's gonna toddler fight him to death. Real mature guys. I guess this sets up the revenge plot. The audio still cuts out every time a voice or punch isn't heard. Why is that happening? You could easily fix that with any kind of post-production background noise. It's almost like the distributors wanted to release a badly edited movie. Crap, that guy's dead, and I still don't know his name. Oh, come on, man. Oh, come on, don't kill oh. me, man. Come on. Oh, come on, man. Oh. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> the origin of Iranian Batman is really fucking stupid. And speaking of stupid... It's a fucking musical now? Don't worry, it still gets even more stupid. Hey, Tiger. Why don't you take me with him? What, are you crazy? You heard me, I mean it. I'm free now! What? Can you give it five minutes before going all I spit on your grave? Hell, even the worst revenge movies usually break for a funeral. The killer actually takes her on a date. I know what that back pocket bandana means. He's into girls who are turned on by their fiancés being killed in front of them. Why is he not suspicious? You know something, Tiger? You really turned me on. I will rise out of you myself. <laughs> I think she might have some ulterior motives on going out on this date. How does that stupid biker not see through this? Yes, lick that ketchup off the knife while she jumps in the shower. Blech. I could say something about that barrel belly, but I'm mostly impressed that his tidy whities don't have shit stains. This is gonna get weird. I just have that feeling. At the same time, lick my belly button. That doesn't seem to be an issue. It's probably not the first time this guy's had a mouth full of lint. Oh, and the guy's dead now. This actually has nothing to do with him killing her fiancé. He just used too much teeth during his belly button job. He's not used to pleasing outies. You'll have to forgive me. I was a little distracted during the next set of scenes because the repetitive soundtrack does not stop playing. I want to choke myself to death with a pocket watch. So I guess she's hitchhiking because she no longer has a home? 
And she's riding through a dream sequence, obviously thinking about the good times. And then she went to go shit in her litter box. <laughs> yes, hitchhiking. I see this going well. Why should I pass up this kind of an opportunity? <laughs> She's God's gift to a hand-picked husband. I must admit, not the greatest Chevrolet tagline ever, but it picked up the mustachioed rape guy demographic. While she doesn't cut his dick off, she does send him running through the desert naked. Inconvenience! That'll show him. And then Mina goes off to... Wait, why are we still following this guy? Is he our new main character now? Whatever happened to these two? Von Kaiser really did lose everything after his loss to Little Mac. Good, now we're getting back to Mina's revenge story. La, la. Never mind, we get to see the guy naked dance as if he's reviewing Nudist Colony of the Dead. This screenplay is like someone hit it with a bat, and this is the result of the concussion. It's the movie equivalent of seeing stars above your head. Just look at this next scene. Innocent looking kid like that made a fool of me. And maybe you are an old fool. What am I going to say to anyone in my family who sees me, or anyone else who sees me? That someone stole my clothes? I would believe that. The rapist monologues shut down after only one show, probably due to the stage smelling like ball sweat. And the fact that it was called the rapist monologues. So now she's talking to her brother or friend? <laughs> I love you, Dad. Oh, my mistake. It's her father. I forgot that he was clearly two years old when she was born. And so what was with that flirty meowing shit? Hey, David's back. He's a cop who is also trying to find the rape bikers. He's very important, since he has no lines in this scene. And I think we have even more characters. I love you, baby, but I'm a cop. I have no control over my time. Baby, you would make time if you love me. I want you today. Who the fuck are you two? And again, why do they all look like Richard Harrison is listening in to their calls? Mina has some downtime, so she picks up a hooker, I think. Hard to tell who hookers were in the 80s, since everyone had bedhead. So why did Mina pick her up? You see, I want to be one of the girls of the night, but I don't know anything about it, so I really need your help. Well, that's easy. Upside is, your lesson's only about five seconds long. Downside, you're a meth head now. Great, now we have to hear the hooker's monologue. I could be killed at any time. Any pranks. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Stop trying to act in this movie. And at least you're not working for this guy. Yikes, at least the golden heart is an added perk. And at this point, who needs dialogue when you have funky music? No one's ever fucking up her church's chicken order ever again. And remember when this movie was briefly a musical? My love, splendors of the moment. It still is. I'm dying for someone to show up and sing about being against the ninja. Miami Connection knew how audio worked. Kinda. Gee, did this movie take a long time to make? I can't tell by the fact that her hair is growing longer and longer by the minute. The moral here is, 
don't hitchhike. Everyone out there is a rapist who wants to kill you. But on the bright side, someone's there to kill them first. She gets rid of the body by putting him in the backseat of Toonce's The Driving Cat's car. Ooh, I see we've gone back in time to 1974 for this shot. I figured a guy named John Rad would also have a time machine. At this point, I think she's just killing anything that moves. For Christ's sake, leave some room for Bronson! While this isn't the worst Stan Lee cameo I've ever seen, thanks, yoga hosers, I'm still distracted by the audio. Well, you're, you're too close to the case. That claim is in charge. That's no answer. My brother was murdered. His fiance is missing. What do you want me to do, sit on my thumbs and wiggle my toes? Hey, maybe you should put down the phone and just listen to the tape recorder that's clearly playing in your office. So I guess someone out there is known as the mysterious tramp murderer? Or he just goes around killing Charlie Chaplin impersonators? What do the cops have to say? So it only makes sense that she was there with him, willingly or unwillingly. Then a biker shows up dead at the motel. I talked to the motel owner and he seems to think that uh, Mina was the one that was with the biker. <laughs> Why go for a second take on that reading? After all, he technically got all the words out. David is going to take care of those bikers himself. You know, the bikers who haven't been seen since we saw both of them killed. Just think, if this were made 15 years earlier, this would be the perfect place for a Colonel Sanders cameo. Isn't that the most wonderful chicken you ever ate? Real biker movies never reveal their secret herbs and spices. David prefers going to this bar. It's where the most people confuse him for being Taylor Negron. And where the most dangerous bikers hang out. He goes by the name of Black Pepper, deals drugs, and he's killed more men than the Nam War. He also has the power of over-exaggerating a lot. One of the bikers follows a girl outside, where apparently, instead of an alley or a parking lot, it's a beach. Was that one of those magic doors that opens up to wherever you want your next scene to be? David himself even passes through the magic door so that he can stop the girl from being raped. So this is David's revenge movie now. Whatever happened to the movie being about Mina, which was at first still about David? What the fuck, movie? They decide to drive home since they lost the magic portal to send them back to the bar. I guess these guys have to find something to pass the time now that Duck Dynasty is going off the air. David sets the girl up as bait, and lo and behold, she is instantly carried away. Too bad he's pretending to have his foot stuck. So, uh, any time, David. Worst cop ever. There, you're free. Now move your ass. Damn, all those sound effects missed him. Better try bullets next time. David puts the bastard under arrest while the movie has other priorities. Hmm, it's only now that I truly believe that this movie is not out to win any Oscars. I guess this is another character who is done with the movie. And again, where the fuck is Mina? And don't distract me with shitty dialogue. There's nothing I'd rather see than your balls wrapped around your tonsils. And that's exactly what BP's gonna do to you. <laughs> what the fuck? I thought BP was trying to change its image. Well, there's a picture of Mina. I guess that's something. Yes, I have everything, even her picture. Yes, sir. I already have my men combing the county, in the air, and on the ground. Good work. Thank you, sir. We'll get her. Uh, hey, as long as you don't film the actor's lips moving, you don't have to worry about dubbing! And whenever someone is wanted by the police, they just tape some pictures of the person on a white sheet of paper. Oh, hey, there's Mina in person. Although something about this shot suggests that she doesn't know she's being filmed. And who are these people following her? I'm a police detective. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. 
What the hell, she's under arrest? That's not how revenge movies work. You don't arrest the vigilante and then just start following around a bunch of other random characters. And why does she look 10 years older? Oh, right. This took forever to make. The only person left to catch now is the gang leader, Black Pepper, and his bad editing. <laughs> Say, I really want to eat at a Planet Hollywood now. I don't know who set up this camera in Brett Michaels' trailer, but I want out of here now. Especially before this scene starts. <laughs> Welcome to the next several minutes of the movie. Why have dangerous men and Bollywood dangerous men when you could just have them both as the same movie? Christ, you have a musical instrument right there. Just use that. Stop with this repetitive soundtrack. Anything to prevent this sex scene? That is not her vagina. Is it just me or does Black Pepper look more like a sugar cube? I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. The world was not ready for a white snake sex tape. Meanwhile, nice of David to pull over so he can get ambushed, unless something else is going on here. Put your guns down and put your hands on top of your head. Stay where you are. Don't make a move. The fuck, I don't see dangerous men at all. All I see is a bunch of fucking convenience. This is really throwing off Black Pepper's groove. Boss, cops are all over the place. You tell everyone to stop them no matter what it takes. Oh, okay. Even if it takes throwing your undies over someone's face. The cops come in, but I'm pretty sure the only person they arrest is a random ghost. I'm not sure that's a real police uniform, or a police weapon. Ah, Black Pepper's back door opens to the same portal that sends him to the rocks. But nothing will free him from this fight scene. Oh, come on, he just won those sunglasses at a Chuck E. Cheese. And are they repeating the same sound effects? Ugh. Well, on the plus side, they're not muting the movie between sentences anymore. There is truly some Blair Witch-style hauntings going on here. How else do you explain Black Pepper fleeing, then magically appearing in front of the cops again, then transporting out in the middle of nowhere? Oh, and Stan Lee as Indiana Jones is our main character now. What the fuck? While I said that joke, he's now magically in someone's neighborhood? This movie doesn't know what geography is. Thankfully, he breaks into the house of someone who raided the props from a Nazi exploitation movie. You never see a roaming member of Twisted Sister coming until it's too late. Oh, and by the way, this is the end of the movie. A villain who really has nothing to do with the first act of the movie is arrested by a character who wasn't introduced until over halfway through after our previous lead characters all but disappear from the film. These plots don't intersect, they just jump through a fucking wormhole. Holy grail of holy fucking shit! That quote has some truth to it. Every other scene in this movie is the epitome of what did that have to do with anything? While the film had an extremely limited run in Los Angeles in 2005, bringing in a total of 70 bucks, the film received a giant cult following when given a re-release by Draft House Films, complete with this DVD and Blu-ray double set. Sadly, the film's auteur John Rad didn't get to witness his film gain an audience as he passed away from a heart attack in 2007. But somewhere, he is up in the sky and smiling down on us because his movie has given joy to lovers of truly what-the-fuck cinema. And I have a feeling that future Patreon suggestions will be just as what-the-actual-fuck is this movie.
Yeah, Dutch, where the fuck you at? Oh, there you are, motherfucker! <laughs>